I wanted to talk about a teeny tiny little manipulation technique that I see people using so that you can just be aware of this and give you some ideas how you can respond to this manipulation technique that people do which is and they're actually taught this like in some of the sales training and I don't like that kind of sales I find it very manipulative they will ask you a question to try to get you to say yes because once you say yes it's a little bit harder to then say no okay so one example of this would be to ask something really small and just neutral and something that's very easy to say yes to it could be anything like um, oh I see you're wearing a pink shirt do you like that color obviously they're gonna say yes because they're wearing a pink shirt who would wear a pink shirt who hates the color pink now it's possible that they might be like, oh, this was a gift, I actually hate pink, right? And if they said that, it would actually be easier for them to not get drawn into the manipulation. But most of the time, if someone said something like that, you'd be like, oh yeah, I love pink, it's my favorite color. And then if they come in with something that they want, it might be a little harder to stay neutral about it, depending on you know, you, of course, like some of people are different in like how they respond to manipulation, right? Some people are a little bit easier to manipulate than others, but the truth is that everybody can be manipulated is, and that's because we're human. Like it's, there's no one who's immune to that kind of thing. So anyway, so the small, the small yes leading to the big yes is one thing and another example of this would be when they say I hate this so much like I, I, I hate it when people say this when people are like can I ask you a question and this is often like online someone you don't know like total stranger will message you and be like oh I can ask you a question and let me break down it sounds like such a simple Oh, it's just a simple, that's not rude, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's what manipulation is. It takes something that actually is rude, is um, Mache Machiavellian, you know, is manipulative in that it's trying to get something from someone, right? You're trying to prey on someone in an unfair way, meaning that they don't know what your objective is and you're trying to use them for something, whatever that thing is. That's what manipulation is. It's not like, oh, it's fair and cool and honest. No, no, no. This is not, um, you know, this is not like convincing someone using facts and having all the info out, out in the open where people know, you know, it, it's honest, it, it's clear, you know everything involved. No, this is very shady and hidden and you don't understand like their intentions and all that. So, okay, so to break this down, can I ask you a question? First of all, questions like this, there's no way to answer them. And that's why they're manipulative. It sounds like an easy thing. Oh yeah, of course, you can ask me a question, right? Um, but you don't really know like what question you're answering because there is an implied thing in the sentence here when they say can I ask you a question it's implied that you're going to answer their question okay so that's the manipulation you see that there's no way that you can say and give your consent that you're going to answer a question when you don't know what that question is so what if the question is like um, so can you give me your social security number and your home address and like I'm just going to get all your info and scam you, right? Um, it could be a question that's way too personal, et cetera, et cetera. So even though it sounds like they're respecting your boundaries and, right, because that kind of question, and this is why it's manipulation. Manipulation is when it sounds like something else that it's not, it sounds like something neutral and nice, but it's actually super mean and horrible. That's why it's manipulative. It's pretending to be something nice when it's actually horrible, okay? So usually we make requests of people, and that's a nice, good thing to do. Things like, 
is it okay if I sit here? Is it okay if I eat your sandwich? Is it okay? And so when it's out in the open like that, you can say yes or no because you understand what's going on. But when it's manipulative, you think you're at, you think you're answering one question and you don't understand that you're actually agreeing to something that you never agreed to by the way that that question is set up. So something as simple as going to ask you a question ends up being the manipulation is that you're answering a question that you're not comfortable with, right? Because then maybe they ask you something too personal and they're like, well, hey, you said I could ask you, you said I could ask you a question. So you should answer it. So there's manipulation right there, okay? So they're pretending that they're respecting your bound, oh, I'm respecting your boundaries. I'm gonna ask if it's even okay to ask you a question. But then they're going to demand you answer it. Well, you agreed that, you agreed that I could ask you a question, so I don't understand why you're being so defensive now. I've just only asked you something extremely personal <laughs> or your social security number or whatever. Um, and at that point, even though it's inappropriate for them to be doing that, you're still going to feel kind of weird because you thought they were respecting your boundaries by asking if something was okay. And in reality, they were demanding an answer to something that you probably don't want to answer. Um, so that's going to make you feel a lot of like inner conflict and you're just going to feel strange about that. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. So you're going to feel like they're like, oh, is it okay if I sit here? And you're like, sure. And then they're like, well, then I'm going to just go ahead and take all your furniture with me when I go home. Because you said I could sit here. So that means you're giving me all your furniture for free. And you're like, wait, no, that's not what I agreed to. So that's like manipulation. Now, that's a weird example. But that's like the underlying structure of what's happening when somebody asks you, can I ask you a question? They're taking one thing you agreed to and then just, now I'm just gonna take all your furniture home with me because you said I could sit here, so that means that you're giving me a gift of your chair and your ottoman and your couch. I'm not gonna take it all with me. You gave, you're the one who gave it to me, right? You said I could sit there. So when they say, can I ask you a question? They're basically demanding that you answer whatever the question is and it's also a way to get you to say yes to whatever they want you to say yes to. And it's also a way to get that upper hand because they know what the question is and you don't. Whenever you have something uneven like this in communication, there's your manipulation because communication that's healthy is clear, out in the open, nothing is hidden. There's no guessing games. It's all just right there on the table, right? Your intentions, the information, everything's on the table. So a healthy way to do this would be to simply ask the question in the first place, not talk about asking it. Just come out and ask the question. So, you know, if you get a message that says, hey, can I ask you a question? Your first thought is gonna be, well, I don't know what the question is. That's why it's unhealthy. It gives you a weird feeling a little bit if you're tuned in. If you're not tuned in, you might think, oh, they're just being polite and respectful. I want to respect my boundaries. You might get kind of fooled and think that it's that. If you haven't like honed your intuition as much and learned more about these techniques. Um, but yeah, so it, it it's just a very weird thing because it seems it seems like a totally polite thing that no one would have a problem with. And like, what's the big deal? You're making a huge deal out of nothing. That's exactly what they're gonna say to you if you call them out on this. Um, but if someone were to message you and say, hey, I was wondering, um, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And they just ask you the actual question. Then you know what's going on. And you can either answer the question or not based on what the question is. Duh, like that's how it should be, right? Like you should not answer any questions that you don't know the question is because you don't know what the question is gonna be. Same thing when people say, hey, can you do me a favor? Same exact thing. 
They want you to say yes so that you then agree to whatever the favor is without knowing what the favor is. So, so these are just some very small things and I know that they're commonly used so I'm not saying that like every person who's ever said this um, you know is an evil person or whatever but there is manipulation there. Even if the manipulation is not necessarily like they're an evil person but they may be an insecure person. So it's a way for insecure people to feel like they're getting that upper hand so that they feel more comfortable. It's like you're sort of submitting to them right away so that they can have the upper hand and then they feel like they don't have to worry that they're going to be rejected or told no or whatever because insecure people are very afraid of being told no. So they will say something like, can I ask you a question or hey, can you do me a favor as a way to hear that yes so that then they feel more comfortable with their request. Um, but I mean, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily an evil person. It could be coming from insecurity, but you have to understand when something is coming from insecurity, it's not good for either people, for either person, because things are not being, you know, out on the table. So even out of insecurity, people can sometimes really manipulate others to make themselves feel more comfortable so that they don't have to worry that they're like risking rejection or whatever. Um, so what do you do about this kind of thing? I mean, the first most important thing is just to notice it and just be aware and then do what you can to put things back in healthy communication, which is things are out in the open, things are neutral. Um, things are not rude. I mean, they're polite, but you don't have to be rude at all to have open, healthy, open, healthy communication. In fact, you shouldn't be. There's no reason to be like insulting people or anything. You want to be saying the truth, um, but that, you know, for anyone <laughs> Machiavellian, who's watching or dark triad who's watching that doesn't give you free range just insult people because it was the truth I think you're ugly so I thought I would just say you're ugly is the truth you can't blame me I speak the truth no 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 that's ridiculous um so just be aware of that too of people telling you that they're just speaking the truth what I mean when I say speaking the truth is saying things that are true but are also you know fairly neutral so for example in this example if someone messages you and says, can I ask you a question, instead of just saying yes or saying sure or yeah, I'm always open to questions or whatever, instead say, what's your question? So you didn't say yes or no. You just said, what's your question? So that if they want to come back then, then now we're on equal footing, okay? And that's where you want to be. You don't want to try to get the upper hand on them. And that's the mistake people make again out of insecurity. If you're secure, you don't need to be in this higher position because for one thing you're really not. Whenever you think you're in that higher position, you're really just manipulating or doing something that's probably going to blow up in your face and not work out. Um, when you stay grounded, you're, you're on equal footing on the ground with this person so there's less risk of, of something you know, blowing up in your face because you're really just stating the truth, but you're also, you know, having empathy and not being mean to people either. You know, there's kind of a balance there. So you can just say, what's your question? And then they're in the position that they have to be open now. They have to ask their question. They can't dance around it anymore because they already know that you want to know the question right and you're not going to answer it if you're not comfortable so that's basically what you've told them this is let's break down what we've just had here hey can I ask you a question subtext is hey can I ask you anything and have you answer it even if it makes you uncomfortable that's really what that means it could also mean hey I'm a little insecure um, can you promise to talk to me even if you don't want to so that I feel better about myself? That's another possible subtext. Um, okay, so that's one. And I mean, you could even have a, a little bit more neutral, like, hey, I'm, I'm looking to talk to you. Um, are you going to reject me or not? 
But see, even with that, there's some insecurity there. There's some looking to the other person to make you feel okay about yourself. So that's the reason that even though this is a line that most people probably won't have a problem with, but people who are a little more intuitive um, or understand people better will usually cringe a bit when they're asked something like, hey, can I ask you a question? It's going to be, right? So you have what's said and then you have the actual subtext. And then if you say, what's your question? And what you're saying is, I will only answer your question if that question is something that I'm comfortable with. Otherwise, I will not. Okay, so that's the subtext. And the subtext also says, I'm not going to make you feel better about yourself if you're insecure. Because um, that's their responsibility to do that. And it also says, you know, we're neutral here. I'm not going to allow you to get that upper hand. So there's so much communication that comes through in the subtext. And this is something that I studied in college. It's really, really interesting um, communications because there are so many levels. I remember we used to just like dissect phrases, right? Now we weren't talking as much about things like manipulation, unfortunately, um, but we were just talking about even the most basic communication. So much is said that it goes beyond just what the words themselves mean. It's so one reason that autistic people have so much trouble because so much of what we are saying is not a literal meaning. It's implied. Um, so that's one example. And you can do the same thing with, hey, can you do me a favor? You can do the same thing and say, what's, uh, what favor do you need? You know, so it's an identical example with the same subtext underneath it. Um, subtext, you know, hey, can you do me a favor? Subtext is, hey, are you willing to do me a favor no matter what it is? You know, you're going to say yes. If you say yes to this question, you're saying yes to my favor. That's the manipulation right there because that's, that's not how requests work. Requests have to be openly stated. Um, so you can come back with, you know, depends what the favor is, says, if it's something that I'm okay with, I will do that favor. If not, no, I won't. And I know it sounds so basic and so obvious and easy, but that is really the key to not being manipulated, is to stay in that position of, I'm not going to do what I'm not comfortable with. And you never need to say those words out loud. You can say it through these phrases or through your behavior because um, most people, aside from maybe narcissists, are not going to go around enjoying saying something like, you're not going to make me do anything that I don't want to do. That's something a narcissist would say and really enjoy like putting that person down. Um, or how dare you? Uh, how dare you think I would do the dishes? Uh, you know, that's more of a narcissist thing. But most people don't really enjoy saying stuff like that. Um, and it's a reason that healthier people sometimes don't protect their boundaries. Because it can be uncomfortable for some people who do get fooled by the manipulation. And they also don't want to have to come out and say something. Because it's very awkward in our culture to say things like that you know it's just awkward so you can communicate that in other ways and in your actions and then it's not nearly as weird as being like I will not do anything that I'm not coming and you can say something like that if you want to like if someone has pushed you or if they're continuing you can make your your no stronger right but if that's like a first request hey can I ask you a question and then you come back with like no one is going to push me to do something that I don't want to do like that would just be like in my opinion something a narcissist would do kind of like an overreaction and in fact that kind of statement is sort of more like putting yourself up here and putting them down um especially when it's said in that tone of voice now if you say it in a neutral tone of voice and the situation 
is appropriate. Like this is someone who is really pushing you for something that you've said no repeatedly and they're still pushing, then you might want to say something really firm and strong like that. You know, like just saying, no, I'm not going to do that. Because again, you want to keep it about you, like I words. You don't want to be like, no, you're pushing me to do something that blah, blah, blah. And you're, you're being manipulative. And I saw this video of manipulation. How dare you do that? You want it to be more about I. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. And again, that keeps you neutral, keeps your feet on the ground. You're not looking down on them and saying, how dare you even ask me that? No, you're just saying, no, I won't do that. And that's a fact, okay? So when you're saying facts that are in reality, it's a lot easier to say them. It's a lot easier to stick to your boundaries when saying it isn't a super awkward, weird phrase. Because I've definitely seen that in books and stuff where people advise you to say this ridiculous stuff, you know? Like, it's just so overly formal for the situation that, that I, I can't imagine any, anyone would enjoy saying that or feel comfortable saying it unless you were kind of trying to put someone down, you know? And you're saying, you know, your request to me, you know, it's just... I'm going to deny it because I, I find you to be a manipulative person or, you know, there's no need to be rude and and put people down. Just, just state the reality and very quickly you can bring yourself out of the manipulation. So the thing is, you're not trying to influence and manipulate them. You're just trying to make sure that that if you've been pulled into something, you pull yourself back out of it and go back stand, go back and stand on the ground again. So, hey, can I ask you a question? Oh, I want to be a nice person. I'm a person who enjoys answering questions. I like helping people. So, yes, of course. Okay, so I, if I did that, I would just have allowed myself to be pulled into the manipulation. And it would be up to me to then be like, wait a second. This feels a little weird to me. Like, I usually like saying yes to helping people, but this time I feel a little bit uncomfortable. You know, you're going to feel just a twinge of like, hmm, I feel like this is past my line, or I feel like I'm getting sucked into something that I haven't agreed to do, which you are. And at that point, whatever that point is, it's up to you, not up to them. Don't blame them because this is how they are. They're a manipulative person. They're always going to be like that. Wait a second. I need I need to go back to my place on the ground where I'm living in reality. My feet are on the ground. I'm neutral. I'm center, centered. I'm calm. So let's say I made the mistake. Hey, can I ask you a question? Sure. Yeah, I love helping people. That would be up to me to be like, wait a second. And at that point, I, I can change what I, what I said and say, hey, you know, actually, what is your question? So even if you kind of miss it the first time, you can always come back and revise your answer um, to make sure you're centered and not getting sucked into that manipulation. And it's hard to do because once you say yes to something, you're going to want to continue to say yes. But those are things you kind of have to learn to do on your own to strengthen yourself and any insecurities that you have about um, whatever is usually going to keep you from being comfortable. Um, I, don't, I don't want to say, yeah, I mean, it's really about like standing up for yourself, but not in a way that you're actually harming other people because most narcissists love talking about how they're just standing up for themselves. That's all that it is. They just don't want others to take advantage of them. They'll use language like that a lot. Um, and what they really mean by that is they want to be the bully. They don't want to be bullied. So when someone tries to bully them, they'll bully them back even more so that they can try to make the other person the victim when they can be the bully. That's where they're comfortable. So it gets a little confusing because narcissists use like the same word in a way that doesn't mean that. And again, that's another manipulation to use a word that has a dictionary meaning and use the word in a way that's just factually not correct. So if I say I'm just standing up for myself and I'm actually harming someone, that's not true. 
If I say something is peaceful and it's violent, that's not true. If I say that your words are violent, that's not true because words are not violent. If you're punching me, that's violent, yes. Um, if I don't like your words, it's hurting my feelings maybe, but that's, that's not violent because that's not what the word violent means. Duh, but that's manipulation. So that's another thing manipulative people do is they will call something something that it's not. So, you know, cheating was just me being myself or it was um, just me making sure that things don't become stagnant in my life. That's all it is. I just have to make sure that I'm, that I'm making myself happy because um, <laughs> like it's hard for me to even think of this because it's like such a lie. Because, um, you know, mental health is so important. So I, ha I had to think of my mental health first. Okay, see, these are lies. This is complete BS, but this is something that a manipulative person will tell you. They'll take something and rename it something else. I didn't steal those cookies. I didn't steal those cookies from you. I was concerned about your health. So I figured if I ate them all, then it'd be better for your health. So, yeah, I didn't steal them. In fact, I gave you a present, the present of health. So that, that's more BS that I just made up. Um, and and they will like believe it and try to convince you that it's true. But anyway, I was just thinking of this because I've noticed a lot of people do this, the whole can I ask you a question thing, um, or can I ask you a favor, or just whatever it is. Define beforehand exactly what they want before you agree to it. Um, or let them know what you are comfortable with. If they won't define it, then you can do that. So if, if you're on a date and and the guy or girl might say this, they might be like, oh, hey, can I come sit a little closer to you? So you don't really know what that means. <laughs> sit a little closer to you could be like, they wanna sit on you or they wanna sit on your side of the table or they wanna sit like, maybe on a chair that's closer like you don't know what that means right so you can't just say yes because you don't know what they mean by that so that's always someone might be manipulative right like you think they mean oh they're just gonna move from this chair to like this chair oh no they meant like sitting like right here oh I didn't okay and then that's awkward because you're like oh I said yes to this but I didn't think it was gonna be this right so again that's your cringe moment. Your cringe moment tells you your boundaries are being violated and you need to put things back on, on level ground in the truth. No need to be mean, disrespectful, or a bully yourself or put them down. You don't need to say, wow, you're really a disgusting human being to think you can sit that close to me. That would be this again. Now you're the bully and you're trying to make them the victim. Instead, just clarify. Oh, hey, can I come sit a little closer? Oh, what were you thinking? Where were you going to sit? <laughs> I mean, obviously, maybe not in that tone of voice. Maybe not a tone of voice of, what were you thinking? Where were you going to sit? Like, probably not like that. <laughs> That's not the best, like, date. You can say that, you know, I'm trying to remember before quarantine when people dated. <laughs> um, so if they're like, hey, can I sit a little bit closer? And you're like, oh, what did you have in mind? Were you going to sit here or here or what? You can say that in a flirty way, but you're still asking to know exactly what's going on so that you can agree or disagree. And then they would normally tell you, oh, I was gonna sit here, or I was gonna sit there, or can I sit over there? And that way, again, you're free to answer yes or no with what you are actually comfortable with. And that's a huge key. You have to only do stuff you're comfortable with because if you're not comfortable with it, you're allowing your boundaries to be violated. And that's a problem. So if you don't want them sitting in your lap, if you don't know them well enough to have them sitting in your lap, and this goes for guys too. Guys, you have boundaries, right? Uh, so if you're just kind of like, oh, that's too soon, I just met this girl, and she's like sitting on my lap. Now, some guys might love that, and that's great, but everyone's different. A lot of guys would not really be comfortable with that, you know, depending on a lot of factors. So a simple, what did you have in mind, where, you know, 
where were you going to move or whatever can tell you a lot. And there's so many tactful ways you can say no. You can just say, you know, oh, why don't we sit here and here? Yeah, this seems like, this is like comfortable. Yeah, this is comfy, right? Like you don't have to be like, no, you may not sit here. How dare you even ask me? That is way too close. You should know that's way too close. You don't, there's no need to do that. You can just keep it neutral, keep it tactful, but also be clear on your boundaries. You know, more like, you know, if this girl is like, oh, you know, can I come sit over there? And, uh, she comes and like sits way too close to you you can be like oh why don't you sit here because I'd be more I'd be more comfortable if we had a little bit more space so I can get to know you better um you know I can like the better you can even say it so I can you know see your face while we're talking or whatever right that's not rude that's totally neutral and fine. Like, that's a little bit of a compliment. Like, oh, yeah, I want to see you while we're talking, you know? Um, so, yeah, that was just on my mind. Like, I, I've noticed things like that that seem like no big deal. But they are because, you know, these little tiny things, they really, they tell you so much. And I'm not saying, as I said before, I'm not saying that anytime someone says, hey, do me a favor or whatever, or hey, you want to know something and you don't even know what you're agreeing to. <laughs> you don't even know what you've just said yes to hearing. And then you're like, I did not want to hear that. Why did I say I wanted to hear that? I mean, I know these things are commonly said, but if you say them yourself, you might want to think about why are you really asking that? Is it like some insecurity? Like you don't know... Like, you don't know if they want to talk to you or whatever. If that's the case, it'd be better to say something like, hey, do you have a minute to talk? Because that's a lot more straightforward than, hey, you want to know something? Because they might not want to know whatever it is that you're, right? That's not really what you're asking. If what you're asking is really, hey, do you have a second to talk? Ask that instead. Because, again, then they can say yes or no to that. And if they are busy, they'll let you know, but if they have time, you know, they can talk to you. Or they'll tell you, yeah, I have like five minutes, or yeah, I've got like all the time in the world. At least like you'll kind of know where they stand on that, right? Um, but that's the thing. You might not have a bad intention using these things, but ask the question that you really are trying to ask them. Now, if you're insecure and you're like, oh, I don't know if you like me, so I don't want to bother you um, if you don't want to talk to me, that would probably be like a hard thing to say to someone for most people. <laughs> so a lot of people will use these things as a way to kind of test it out. Um, but you can do the same thing with, oh, yeah, I wanted to talk to you for a minute. Do you have time? Like, that does the same thing. They can say no, and they don't have to say, no, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> like, you know, you can use something like that as an excuse. Um, but, of course, you 100% won't know if they really want to talk to you because they might just be busy. So that's the thing. The more honest and direct you are, the closer you get to the truth. <sighs> but you take more of a risk, you have to be less insecure in order to be super blunt like that. And for the more insecure people, it's about kind of like hiding things under, right? So they'll do a lot of um, saying things that they really don't mean at all as kind of an excuse to do something else. And, you know, a little tiny bit of that is, is okay, but you always want to try to get closer to the side of honesty um, when you can because, you know, so, like, me personally, it's like I've gone to a point that I'm really blunt. If I figured out that I want to, want to know something from someone, like, if I want to know if I'm bothering them, 
instead of making up an excuse and being like, oh, well, and having it be about time or, oh, did you eat the food yet? You, instead of using some excuse, I'll just come right out and ask them, you know, <laughs> and you can be really direct like that. And, um, if people can see that, like, no, you're, you're just trying to figure out the deal. Um, and I've had people say that to me before, like guys in bars or whatever, sometimes would say something like, look, I don't want to bother you. I just want to talk to you if you, if you felt like talking or whatever. There is nothing wrong with being straightforward like that. And it's actually really good and kind of a relief for both people because then they can explain, well, you know, it's just that I'm kind of dating someone right now and, or or I'm just kind of not feeling like talking to anybody at the moment, or whatever it is, if you're going to say no, weirdly enough, it's kind of easier if someone has already broken that ice, and again, put things back, right? Um, so I know, like, with me, I remember one time I was, like, super blunt, and I was at this event, and, like, the people I was with at the event were, um, they went and we're doing this other thing. So I was like alone for the time being and kind of bored. So <clears throat> I went over to someone was like, Oh, Hey, you know, and I introduced myself and I was basically like, okay, here's the deal. I'm waiting for these people to get back. So I'm just looking to someone looking to talk to somebody, but if, if you're doing X, Y, Z or whatever, that's fine. You know, I can, I can talk to other people and stuff. And that's probably way more blunt than most people would do that. Most people would kind of hide it behind a lot of other things. They, they'd say something like, oh, are you busy? Or or they might do this whole thing of, oh, can I ask you a question, blah, blah, blah. But it's a little awkward for the other person because if the other person doesn't want to talk to you and then you're like, oh, do you have time? And then they might feel pressure to be like, oh, yeah, I have time, you know. Um, yeah, that's fine, you know, that kind of thing. And I hate when people feel like that. I'd rather they felt comfortable just saying, oh, you know what, I'm just working on this presentation right now, and I just have, like, five minutes before I go get this presentation, so I'm just trying to, like, clear my head at the moment. Okay, cool, yeah, that's fine, you know. Because just with me, I don't take things personally like that. Like, if someone doesn't want to talk to me, even if it's because they don't like me, they have a right to that. And that's something I think people forget, that people have a right not to talk to you. They have a right not to like you. And if they don't want to, that's a boundary. That's fine, you know? So for me, I like like to make people feel comfortable enough that they can just be honest. and um, Or even if they don't want to tell you the backstory, that's fine too. They might just say, oh, you know, no, thank you. Okay, fine. You know, they don't want, they don't want to talk. It's important not to take that stuff as like, they hate me. Oh my God. They don't even know you. They don't hate you. They have some reason that they don't want to talk to you. Maybe they don't like you, but that's okay. Not everyone has to like everyone. That's something that like we've forgotten. There's a lot of people that are not very nice people. We don't have to like them. If they're mean to you or whatever, or you just get a bad vibe from them. Or they're just, I don't know, they just don't click with you for whatever reason. You guys know I have all these personality type videos. There's so much compatibility that some people just don't click. And that's something that we have to accept without being like villainizing people for, you know. Because people should have a right to not talk to every stranger who walks up to them. Um, so anyway, that's some things that you can do. I hope that's a little bit helpful. Um, those examples were like really basic, but you can substitute a lot of stuff in there. You'll hear this every day if you look for it. Um, like even like maybe free samples. Hey, would you like to try a free sample? But let's say you don't know what the free sample is and you can't see it. Now normally free samples would be like all like laid out you would see it. But if you walked up to someone and they had like a box, you're like, would you like to try a free sample? then you're going to feel pressure to be like, yes, and then maybe it's something you don't want to eat, and they're like, oh, great, let me put this cracker together, let me put something disgusting on it that, like, you're just going to not want 
to swallow. Okay, here you go. You know, and then you're like, oh, thank you. Most people will just take it and then like find a trash can. But it's so much easier when you can be like, oh, what's the sample? Oh, it's that. Oh, that is not my favorite. Now you know it's that disgusting thing you hate. Whatever, whatever that food is that you can't stand, that's what's on the cracker. And you can be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of that, you know. Don't just say yes, because then you're putting yourself in that position of, of being manipulated. So I hope that was interesting. Um, for anyone new, my name is Julie Malillo. I'm a life coach in New York. My website is yourdreamslifecoach.com. If you want rates, just send me an email there. And thank you guys for watching, and please like and comment and subscribe. Thanks. Have a good day, everybody.